Valley Sports, uh, Mark, it seemed like everybody that stepped on the floor played with confidence. How were you all able to, to kind of get to that after a couple tough losses here recently? Yeah, I thought um, the, the key to the game was the start. Um, defensively, good fundamentals. You know, we got ourselves back on track in terms of habits. You know, those last two games just um, weren't who we want to be. And then offensively, you know, I thought we played a great pace. I thought we really moved uh, hard in the half court on our screens and slip outs, which you have to do against them because they're a really physical team and they really switch. And so um, I thought the execution of those things is what got the ball rolling for us tonight. Obviously, um, you know, we got it going pretty good there in the second half, but what started the whole thing was fundamental. And it just, it seemed like contagious fun out there too. What's, I know you're probably kind of locked in on the, the X's and O's, but are you feeling just that kind of the joy that's brimming off the court? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, I'm happy that I, we shared it with our fans, happy for the guys. Um, you're going to end up on both sides of that in an 82-game season at one time or another. I want the guys to enjoy it when we're on that side of it, but I also I, I want the guys, I told them after the game, I want them to realize what got it going, which was um, we had a great practice yesterday came into the game with great focus on both ends of the floor, what we had to do, and that's what allowed us to have fun tonight, um, and we can't lose sight of that. Last one for me. Uh, Shea, late scratch, and it, nobody's looking around. You all seem to just play the exact same style and identity. Um, what do you credit that to? Um, you know, the guys, you know, um, they did a great job tonight. You know, we have confidence in them. They have confidence in themselves. Shea has confidence in his teammates. Um, and, you know, that was on display again tonight. It happened again um, a couple weeks ago in the Memphis game with him and Josh out. So um, we're just going to try to play our game regardless of who's out there. Pierce Lawson, Valley Sports. Um, going back to the, the, the defensive effort for you guys tonight, it just seemed like there was a lot of personal pride individually from guy to guy. Trey Mann just absolutely hassling, you know, Hauser up at the top getting this deal. What did you see in terms of the, the pride that, that each guy had out there? Yeah, we're not going to be perfect 82 games, but the Charlotte and Philly games left a lot to be desired physically on the ball especially. Um, and we challenged the team yesterday in practice and in film on that you know, particular thing, and then it also wasn't who we wanted to be from a help defense standpoint. So, uh, you're going to go in and out through the course of the season. You never maintain a you know a really high standard, which we have. Um, but the guys did a really good job of course correcting coming in the game, and obviously the end of the game was fun. But what started all that was a commitment to fundamentals and the game plan early. And just with the energy level, it seemed like a, a pretty 48 minute energy maintained throughout the night and after that Philly game when not in, in, no energy in the first and, and bringing in the second just what did you think of kind of the, the continuation of the energy throughout the night it was great uh, it was a 48 minute effort and but it started in the first quarter I thought we got off to a great start and we set a tone in the game uh, more so to ourselves than to Boston about how we were going to play tonight and um, I thought that first group that started off did a great job for us and then it continued throughout the game yeah, Cliff Brown, Associated Press. You know, you guys came out and got off to a great start, obviously, but, you know, halftime, you know, a veteran team like that that's been through it, they can come in and throw some punches at you and get back in the game. You guys weathered those all the way out through the third quarter. They gave it their, you know, they gave it the old college try, so, try, so to speak. You guys handled that. Your thoughts about handling their effort there in the third quarter when oftentimes those teams kind of cut into those kinds of leads. Yeah, I thought what Paris was talking about with kind of the individual pride uh, physically on the ball, especially, you know, late in the second quarter, they started to put their head down, Boston did, and they got to the line and they were trying to play through us and they were just trying to like jam their way back into the game. Uh, and we needed to stand in there in order to defend that off. And I thought the guys did a really good job of that, uh, especially on ball and especially, um, you know, at the point of attack. And it was it was every guy tonight. Jerry Ramsey franchise, whenever you talk about game planning against these guys, I mean, was aggression and getting to the rim, was that like a main point? Because you look at a guy like Isaiah Joe, like trying to go to the rim and, and throw it down. I mean, that was, you know, I, I imagine that would get uh, the other guys going. Yeah, it was more like the force you have to play with against their physicality. You know, they are switchable at every position. They have great individual defenders. They have size everywhere. Um, and if you are slow against them, then, you know, it's going to be a long night. And so we just, I thought in Boston, we did a great job of it really for three quarters. You know, we, we were really forceful. We played with great pace in that game, and that's what opened up a lead there. And we wanted to do that again tonight, and the guys did a great job of executing it. Oh. Excuse me. Um, last week you said that, or yeah, last week you said that 
you guys had to have a little bit more attention and, and I'm paraphrasing or using synonyms, but um, when the Celtics come into town, um, was that what the what it was tonight when the start of the game that you've been talking about? Did you guys just had more attention and to detail to the game? Yeah, I mean, these last couple games, we just haven't gotten off to a great start, um, you know, in terms of either end of the floor, uh, in terms of who we want to be from an identity standpoint. And when you do, it sets a tone for the game, for your own team and for the opponent. And that was a huge, you know, point of emphasis coming into tonight. And I thought, obviously, the guys did a good job. And Trey was very good on both ends of the floor. I mean, can you just talk about him specifically on the defensive end and him putting it together, especially like after last year? Last year, he got sent to the G League specifically for defense. So can you just talk about his effort on that end? Yeah, he was good tonight. You know, he, he had his chest on them. And uh, he was really good, actually, in the, I think, second, third, and fourth quarters of Philly. You know, he was one of the guys in that Philly game that really tried to get it going. Um, and offense is going to go in and out, you know, when you're a guy like him or Isaiah whose you know, strength that they're bringing to the team is jump shooting and shot making and um, rhythm. You know, that's, not all, that's not a constant for any player. And so there's got to be more to your game than that. And I thought Trey you know, showed a holistic game tonight. So it seems like regardless of how the guys play, they always seem to try hard, um, which is really hard to do in 82 games. Stuff gets repetitive. Sometimes you know, guys get down. Can you kind of talk about the art of getting these guys motivated each and every game to where, you know, if somebody like Shea is out, you know, somebody like Giddy will step up and be that star guy? Um, yeah, I think it starts with who they are as people, um, you know, and as competitors. Like, it's not a hard group to convince to play hard and to compete. You know, they're just – they're preconditioned for that. They have that walking in the door. It's one of the things that Sam in the front office has done a great job of identifying in player acquisition. Um, and now we depart from that at times, but when you go in front of the team and say, hey, we got to compete harder, or we got to be more together, or we got to play hard, um, you're speaking their language. You know, you're not having to sell it to them. It's, it's very much part of who they are as players, and that makes it a lot easier from a motivation standpoint. Mark, I, I know crazy things happen kind of every night in, in the NBA, but scoring a franchise record 150 without your leading score against – the best team in the NBA by record. I mean, how do you just sort of explain something like that? Well, you're zero and zero every day. You know, it's a great zero and zero game. Um, and then I, you know, for us internally, I don't know how to explain the greater narrative of it, but for us internally, I just think it's, you know, being able to drill down the fundamentals that can help you do that. You know, that wasn't um, what we did tonight was not anything outside of what we could control other than the shot making, which obviously was a huge part, especially in the second half. We're banking shots in and getting free throw rebounds. But um, what got us off to the start and what got the game going in that direction was simple fundamentals that are important to us every day. And I think a game like that, we're not going to score 150 every night. But a game like that shows the power of those fundamentals, and hopefully that's the lesson we draw from it. Um, 150 tonight, obviously, said franchise records tied for the second most ever scored against the Celtics. Obviously, 150 is sort of an anomaly, but at what parts of the game are you seeing that are repeatable for success going forward in the other games this season? Yeah, just, I mean, the pace of play, you know, inside the actions, especially, you know, the, the two-on-two little games that you play against switching. You know, we're going to see a lot of switching. You know, sometimes it's schematic like Boston. Sometimes we try to create it with the defenders we're putting in an action. And our guys were just kind of dancing together, you know, in the action tonight to create advantages. And then we were spraying it out of those advantages. But I thought our, our force and the initial advantage on offense was um, the answer to your question. I just think the pace that we did that with tonight is something that, you know, we can learn from the game. Isaiah Joe has played just 30 games with Oklahoma City, but he's seen his three highest scoring games already of his career. What do you attribute that to, whether it's confidence or opportunity, whatever it is? Um, yeah, he's ready. You know, that's that's been on display uh, many times this year. I give him a lot of credit because um, he came here late. Uh, after training camp because that was when he got released. Uh, and so he missed camp and started kind of um, behind, you know, with this particular group. And we were still learning him. He was still learning us. Um, and he just he's kind of walked in with his chest out. You know, I give him a lot of credit. Um, and every time we went to him early, he kind of he dove headfirst into the game. Uh, and he continues to bring that kind of juice when we put him out there. And it's not only the shot making, you know, like he really competes on the glass on defense. He knows what's going on. I give him a lot of credit. 
Anybody else? All right, guys. Yep.